Shalom, shalom. In today's video, we're talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And did Apostle Paul say that or mean that he wanted everybody single? Let's talk about it. righteous spiritful episode today i'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business man it's very important that people learn to read the bible in context very important man you don't know how many teachings and sermons people have given off of using one bible verse and then they teach out of context they insert their idea into the text. And when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 6 and 7 are very crucial verses, okay? But contextually, you need to see what that chapter is about. Apostle Paul, who is a Roman citizen, you know, who never denounced his Roman citizenship. Matter of fact, he exercised it, okay? Apostle Paul was grafted in because of the faith, because of how he walked. But Apostle Paul was a Gentile. When you look at what he's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter seven, he's talking amongst the people in his letters about how to conduct yourself in marriage and the different statuses within marriage, you know, divorce, talking about uh, conjugal rights in marriage. And then when you get to verse six, this is very important because people use verse seven and jump to these conclusions that, well, Apostle Paul said that we should be single. It's not what Apostle Paul said. Definitely not when you look behind the word, when you look at the etymology of words, now we know that the penmanship of the scribes is in vain in some of these newer translations that don't have no linkage or link to etymology of the original text. We know they're gonna say whatever they want to get the world to go the way that they want people to go. But he says in verse six, I say this by permission and, and you need to go look up the etymology of by permission. Not as a commandment. I say this by permission, not as a commandment. I wish some of you, and this is verse seven, I wish some of you were as I, myself. And then in the end of uh, verse seven, he goes into talking about spiritual gifts. Nowhere in there did he say that this is your commandment, this is your law, this is your precept to just be single. Now let me add, there's nothing wrong with being single, but there's everything wrong with it when you are single and sinful. Listen to what I'm saying. You got, you know, a, a, a virgin who is single, Male or female, never never engaged uh, in the consummation of marriage. Male or female, hasn't been defiled. You know, the most high Yah would, 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 would rather have you at that state in pureness than somebody out here who's proudly single, engaging in all kind of acts of sexual immorality and fornication and all kind of abominations. But yet, leaning on the letters of Apostle Paul to say, this is why I'm single. Apostle Paul said I could be single. The problem is most of these people that uh, gravitate towards, okay, Apostle Paul said we should be single. Apostle Paul wished we was like himself. What happens is 
they start to worship and honor the words of Apostle Paul more than they do the will of the Most High Yah. What, is, what do I mean by that? See, when we read, you know, uh, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, you're going to understand what the Most High Yah's will is from the beginning. And if, if people misinterpret what Apostle Paul was saying because of their sinful rebellion, meaning that you got people that he was talking to that was jacking up marriage. Gentiles, he was the minister unto the Gentiles. When we look at it, the Gentiles, all of the, the types of sexual immorality and stuff that we read about in the book, that didn't, that didn't originate from the Israelites that originated from the heathen, from the Gentiles. All of these orgies, all of this, 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 this sexual. This is why when you look at Roman artwork, you see the concept of orgies and pedophilia and all of that in their artwork. It originated with them. So Apostle Paul was saying for these people that were possibly married and jacking up marriage, according to the will of the Most High Yah, according to the law of the Most High Yah. He said, I would wish that some of you were like myself. It would have been better off if you were single like him, rather than going through marriage, jacking it up. Look at the context of what it's saying. Pastor Paul was talking to uh, folk on how to conduct themselves you know, in the union of marriage, according to the will of Yah, Pastor Paul ain't, is not writing law. He's not giving commandments. No, you got to go to Torah to get that. Even when Messiah is speaking of commandments, he's always referencing Torah. He's not making up a, a brand new list of commandments. No. Messiah said, man, I come to do the father's will and not my own. You gotta think, man, we are in a generation where men and women will think that they are perfect and don't require patience or mercy, and it's the complete opposite. When you put two of these people together, you're gonna realize, man, it's gonna take a whole lot of patience. It's gonna take a whole lot of mercy. It's gonna take a whole lot of forgiveness. And without the will of the Most High Yah, without the Holy Spirit being in there, good luck. And a lot of these people are dead set on being fornicators, on being sexually immoral, you know, of being, uh, they're, they're dead set on being butt cheek divers. Marriage in the eyes of the Most High Yah is the furthest thing away from what they want to do. And Apostle Paul is saying, hey, man, I wish some for you, for your sake, I wish some of you were as myself. Y'all jack this stuff up. Look at the context of what he's talking about. You just don't get to take one line and say, yep, that's my line right there. Hey, that's my song. Hey, single ladies, where you at? Single men, where you at? You don't get to do all that. No, but look at the context of that thing. And we see from the beginning that the will of the Most High Yah was to marry, was to be in a covenant relationship, you know, for man to be covered by Messiah, biblical order. And then, you know, woman to be covered by man. Listen to what it says in the word. It says, but the head, even in this book, it says, but the head of man is woman. The head of man. It doesn't classify husband. No, it's talking about man in general. That can be a father. That can be a man that chooses to protect and cover. That can be a husband. Man, it's very important in this last days with all of these uh, familiar spirits out here and all of these uh, disguises of Hasatan, you know, and his hand in damnable doctrine that we hold on to the will of Abba Yah. I get it. Some people, you got to think, man, there's people out there that uh, have discerned and vetted people, but there's nobody that uh, righteously they can marry because they're not equally yoked and you see it. The most high, y'all don't have no problem with that. You don't have no problem with that. I, sh I commend all the brothers that fear the most high, y'all, the brothers and sisters that fear the most high, y'all, keep his commandments and are single because 
you got people hitching themselves to marriage via the way of the Gentile and catching hell. And catching hell. And Apostle Paul, why do you think Apostle Paul had to say, uh, do not deprive one another unless it's for a short period of time? Because this stuff was happening in Corinth. It was happening. Had married folk not had, you gotta look at what's out here, sexless marriages. Apostle Paul was addressing this. He was addressing this stuff. The conduct of some of the same stuff that we see today in, in Gentile uh, backed marriage, family court, you know, third party court system mayor. Apostle Paul was dressing some of this stuff. Trying to correct it out amongst the Gentiles. He was a minister to the Gentiles. And this is what Apostle Paul is talking about. What 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 good would you be in marriage if you are uh sitting up here as a husband but promoting your wife being on OnlyFans? Like you what? You could have sinned all on your own. You didn't need to bring somebody else into, you know, that type of covering which is a very worthless type of cover. Okay, I want you to think about this. You have married porn stars. Married porn stars out here. And they'll tell you some of the dysfunction in their marriage and act as if it is normal. In these situations, it would be better if these folk wasn't even, wasn't even married. This is what Apostle Paul was getting after. He wasn't going against the will of the Most High, Yah. You gotta think, there's gonna be a lot of people you know, that will not be fit for marriage. They don't, they don't, they're not striving to learn how to be husbands. They're not striving to learn how to be wives. They don't care nothing about the duties that they supposed to feel. All they think about is what they can get out the deal, not about their acts of service. And for that, a lot of these people will lead uh, extremely sinful lives and they're gonna get more rebellious over time. And for that sake, it'd be better off if you were better. If you don't listen to me as a woman, if you don't want to submit to your covering in all things, if you don't want to be submissive, modest, and meek, and all of this stuff, you know, it would have been better. Like, you, if you fit the build of Jezebel, your marriage ain't worth a day. If you fit the build of Jezebel, Jezebel was married to Ahab, but teaching other people to be sexually immoral. Think about that, you know? As a man out here, if you if you uh, don't want to fulfill the will of the Most High Yah, he ain't just giving you no pass because you say, hey, I got a marriage license. Hey, we married and you out doing all this other stuff that he prohibits. No, been better off if you were single. Closer to Yah Ministries, kicking it gun barrel straight.